Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. Alright, you may recall in my last video I spent a little time working on the pool pump because I'd been having problems with it getting it to run ever since uh, uh, it geysered about six inches of water out of the pool a couple weeks ago and flooded the backyard. Um, I brought it over to the pool place as you recall. They took a look at it and they declared immediately that they thought it was seized up and was probably uh, gonna have to be replaced but they did offer to take a look at it anyway and I got a call a couple days ago saying that they managed to get the thing working again now the place is closed today so I can't go pick it up uh, until tomorrow but there's that one other problem I've been having where I'm tripping breakers on that line and I want to try and figure out what's going on I suspect what's going on is I'm having a problem with the GFCI plugs and so I want to replace those today uh, that shouldn't be a terribly difficult thing but I want to go talk to somebody at Home Depot and get them get their opinion on this whether they think that a problem with a GFCI plug could trip the breaker in the garage as well uh, but like I said I also want to talk to them about the idea of whether it's good an idea to have two of these GFCI plugs next to each other. Maybe the way they're doing it here isn't as much of an issue as the way I was doing it uh, in my house in California. But like I said, when in, in my house in California, the building inspector said that it wasn't a good idea to have two GFCI plugs on the uh, same line at the same time because sometimes they can interact with each other and I'm wondering if that could be part of the issue So I want to talk to them at Home Depot see what they think and maybe we'll replace the uh, Both the GFCI plugs with maybe one GFCI and one standard plug to go in its place But like I said, I want to talk to them a little bit and uh, Get this all taken care of so when we do get the pump back We're not having problems with it constantly shutting off and tripping breakers now these are the outlets that I'm talking about and I think before I go in I want to um, uh, take the cover off look at behind here and see how this is all wired up because that could be part of the issue you know maybe having an understanding how it's wired up uh, if they're in parallel or in series with each other will give me a clue on what's going on and at least I'll be able to answer some questions when uh, I get to Home Depot and you know ask my questions so I'm gonna pull this cover thing off here and we're gonna look at the wiring inside first thing I want to do though is trip the breaker inside so we're not dealing with live electricity because safety first all right, so I got this thing open, and uh, we already we have our That's not how it's done. Sorry, I haven't been able to use that sound effect in a while, but I noticed that these outlets aren't even attached to the breaker box in here. They were just floating loose in here, and they are really tight in that hole to the point where they actually had to put a... Uh, uh, electrical tape around the outlets because they are uh, around the terminals because they're so close together they're literally touching so I don't know this is a uh, yeah I see what they're doing here they are in parallel uh, there is this red line here that's going over to the timer I don't think the timer is actually okay that's off that's on I'm not aware of the timer actually having any effect though because it seems here that this should be turning on and turning off the the whole system um, on intervals it looks like uh, it uh, comes on uh, or goes off at uh, about 8 o'clock and on at about 6 o'clock but I'm not aware of this thing ever coming on or off it always seems to be on so I don't know exactly what the timer is doing in there and I almost wonder if it's even necessary. We may end up just isolating that from the circuit and uh, forgetting all about all that. Because like I said, I don't think I've ever used, a, I've ever never seen the timer come on or off. So, I don't know, that's interesting. But right now I'm going to start off with the GFCI plugs and uh, I think I'm just going to maybe go replace those and let's see if that makes our problem go away. Like I said, this one here seems to be the main problem. It seems to trip uh, periodically, and you just have to basically a little reset the little button here. And um, I had one thing plugged into this out thing outlet, one plugged into this outlet, and I was actually flipping the items around to see if by putting the thing that was in this outlet into this outlet, if it made this one trip, 
or if just the fact that they're in parallel together is making is causing the problem and also causing the problem with the breaker so like i said next next step let's go to home depot all right so i've studied this a little bit more and i think what's going on here is one of the outlets this one here is connected to the load constantly and then this one is connected to the load only through the timer so that's probably why i've never noticed that the uh the uh the pump goes on and off at certain times of the day because i think i've always had the pump plugged into this outlet so uh we're gonna see what happens like i said i i am not I've had things plugged into this outlet, so it kind of surprises me that it would go on and off and I've not noticed it. Maybe they had like lights in here or something, because it looks like, let's see, what does it go on? It goes off at 8 p.m. and on at about 9 a.m., if I'm reading that right. And if that's the case, then that would be something that's coming on during the day not at night so it isn't like lights or something like that i don't know i'm not sure exactly what they would have been doing with that but that is a piece of the puzzle that we maybe we'll decide we don't even need to be a part of anymore maybe we'll just disconnect that timer and remove it from the circuit altogether i don't know who knows who knows what sort of an effect it could have turning on and off uh with the timer that could be something that's tripping the breaker too so uh we'll throw that into the equation when we're talking to home depot and uh see what they think so i'm back from home depot got a couple of new gfci plugs and we're going to see how this works now i know i've been using the term gfci plugs a number of times and i try and be a little educational here so gfci means ground fault circuit interrupter plug and so basically it's a little circuit breaker built right onto the out onto the outlet itself and it's really these are really useful in environments where there may be like wet and water like in a bathroom in a kitchen a swimming pool any place where there could be an exposure to water especially if it's something that you know if you're like in a swimming pool and there's a a failure of the circuitry you obviously wouldn't want to have your water energized so these are designed in the event that uh, certain conditions happen that they'll trip really quick and it'll trip faster than a circuit breaker and so these are a good thing like i said to put in in specific locations where there's a possibility of uh moisture and so that's why these were uh, outside in the uh, area around the pool because there's a possibility of moisture out there so they're a little bit more expensive but it's worth it if you're you know looking at uh trying to keep things as safe as possible and prevent accidents now i've been thinking about this a little bit and i've decided i'm going to actually remove the timer from the circuit so that will simplify things significantly in the breakout box and hopefully i can actually clamp this thing down and not have it uh floating loose in the box like it was because that's just not a good thing uh, so I'm going to go outside now. We're going to remove the old one. I'm going to neaten this thing up and try and get it reinstalled and get ourselves going again. Now one of the cool things about these new GFCI plugs is they're not quite as deep as the uh, old one. The old one is probably a good oh, quarter of an inch uh, deeper than it and uh, that's part of the reason why they were unable to secure these two outlets into the junction box I'm hoping that having a thinner outlet and less of a rat's nest of wiring in there is going to enable me to get get these things secured and screwed down so that they're not moving around in there and that should be a safety thing too because whenever you get something you know electrical that's moving around loose inside the wall there's always the possibility that something get jarred and you get a short and you never know how that's going to do yes they put some black electrical tape around the terminals to protect that but there's still always the possibility that something could happen so uh like i said i'm going to install the new ones right now um i actually want to uh kind of wire the two new ones together inside because i'm going to tap onto one of the terminals and then uh, go from the from the terminal to the other one so i'm not going to actually have a couple wire nuts in there um, going you know splitting off uh, going to each of the outlets i'm going to go to one and then tap off that and go to the other one that should keep it a little neater in there and uh, you know like i said get everything secured in there nice and nice and well so that it isn't uh 
it isn't moving around and creating an electrical hazard. You never know. That could all be all what it is. Maybe these outlets were just floating around in there and we're occasionally having problems. Now, I am looking at these. It does look like there's some little scorch damage here on both of them, actually. They're a little kind of discolored a little bit, like maybe they've been scorched a little bit. And that could be evidence that something happened at one point in the past, too. So it was probably a good, a good deal to replace these and... Uh, uh, let's get going with that. And it's really hot out today, so I'm going to do a lot of this in the house. Uh, might as well, right? Got the nice air conditioning running. It's better than being outside in 97 degree temperature. All right, so I got these two things uh, all wired up here. I think this is going to be a lot simpler here. I just got the three three lines coming from the wall. And I take uh, the plug here daisy chain it over to this one I take the plug here daisy chain it over to that one and then the only place I actually used a wire nut was on the neutral and that's just because there wasn't the ability to daisy chain them as easily as there is on here I can actually put two wires in and clamp it down here I can actually put two wires in and clamp it in down here on the neutral though I'm kind of forced to go with a wire nut so we did that but that is way less complicated basically I, this is all the wire that went over to the uh, timer and I just kind of pulled that back through there so it's a lot less of a mess in here so I want to put this something back together now uh, but before that I'm actually going to turn it on and let's make sure everything's wired up correctly all right power back on well, that's encouraging. If there was a serious problem, uh, it would have tripped the breaker right away. So let's go outside and see if uh, everything's lit up right. All right, so I was a little surprised when I first came out. Neither of these things were on, but apparently they default to the tripped mode. So I had to reset the breakers. Once I reset the breakers in here, they're all good to go. Uh, the right lights are on. It's a little different for each one because they're different manufacturers. But this one, if the two uh, orange lights are on, it's good. On this one, if the two outside lights, the uh, white and the orange, are on, it's good. So, uh, both of them are lit, lit up properly. There's also a little green LED on what each one of them that shows whether it's tripped or not. So, this is all good. I'm going to go shut down the breaker one more time, and we're going to get these things put back into the, into the breakout box, closed up, and then we'll give it one final test. All right, got the outlets uh, reinstalled in there. I've uh, got the power back on again. The right lights are lit up, so we don't have any real problems. So I'm gonna pull these off. We're gonna put the cover panel back on top of it, and I think we're done with this project. All right, so got the cover back on, uh, screwed into place, nice and secure. That was another thing I noticed is this panel wasn't connected very well. It wasn't screwed down very tight. Now, one of the things I noticed is apparently it was connected some way. You remember I told you how the outlets looked like they were just floating around in there? Well, it turns out that the screws that they use to connect the uh, water guard to the outside of the outlet were the same ones that go through and hold the, uh, hold the outlet in place. Uh, now, actually in reality, it should be these top screws here which go into the, uh, to the framework of the outlet. So I think this is a better option because now I can pull this thing off without having the outlet st uh, start flapping around there loose. So that's definitely a better way of doing that. And now we're gonna see if my theory about uh, the GFCI plugs being the problem here if that actually turns out to be the problem because uh, we'll find out now when we start plugging things into this if we continue tripping breakers again so uh, I'm gonna plug everything in get everything going again and hopefully this will be the last time we have to revisit this issue okay everything's powered back on now now we're gonna just see uh, over the next couple days whether we have any more issues with our power system but I hopefully this will fix the problem uh, other than that, the only other thing it really could be maybe is potentially something with a faulty breaker. And that happens sometimes, but that's sort of an unusual thing. So that's why I kind of took the gamble of just replacing the uh, GFCI plug, because that was just kind of, kind of a cheap thing that I could do that would probably fix the problem. So I'll let you know how this works out in the future. Uh, but I think that's all that I have for today. So thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.